Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace to all of you, members of Barry Congregational Church and all our neighbors and friends uh, in and around Barry. I'm Pastor Margaret Kayser, and with me this morning is our Deacon Lisa Holloway. Uh, we are welcoming you to our service this morning, this YouTube service, and hope that this will be a blessing to you so you can watch it um, um, uh, on your own. But we are also uh, coming together via Zoom where we watch the service together at 930. And so we hope that this is a time where we all will feel blessed, even though we are not physically together. We also have a little coffee hour after our service, which is always a delight uh, to see and hear one another. Uh, I have a special thank you this morning. Thanks to the deacons who always help me to get to make this service possible. Uh, I also want to thank our organist, Deborah Page, for the beautiful music that uh, you always uh, bring to us, Deb. And then Wendy, Wendy, you're such a, our secretary. She is such a... Uh, a person one can uh, rely on. Thank you, Wendy, for all that you do for us. Um, you create the bulletins and you send out these notifications on Thursdays, but also on Sunday mornings. Then we have a special treat this morning with the Advent reading. We have Kevin Fogarty with um, Lisa uh, Harris and then their daughter, Bryn, with them this morning. So they will do the Advent reading. Thank you so much. And thank you, Bryn. It's good to see you. And then also uh, with the candle lighting, we have Jillian Musnicki. Thank you, Jill. Uh, and so we have a wonderful service for you um, and hope that you will find us a blessing. So while we are worshiping together in this way, I ask again that we keep our, our families, ourselves, and um, our loved ones in prayer, uh, near and far, and also in the world. Let's pray together with the church that God will really help us through and, re and deliver us from this uh, virus that has been such a devastating situation for us during this year. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this third Sunday of Advent where we can come together even though we are not face to face. And we know that you are with us wherever we are and, and in this service. And so we ask that through your Holy Spirit, you will bring us a word of comfort, of strength, and give us direction as we are uh, continuously looking for wisdom to make our services meaningful. And during this Advent time, we ask that you uh, will be a blessing to us as we look to the birth of Christ how we will celebrate it, but also during this time of Advent as we are thinking about your, your second coming. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Such greatness no one can fathom. The nations will tell of your power and mercy and grace, O God. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Guide us in your truth, O Lord, and renew our hearts and minds. Why? 
it's time for the Jesse tree. So I hope you're getting lots of symbols up there and that you're having fun reading. It's very interesting going through this Old Testament. I'm not really good at reading that Old Testament. And I've had a few changes on my Jesse tree because some of them fell down and I guess my dog likes them. So she ate a few or didn't eat them, but she tore them apart. So I'm using some of the old symbols I've had and you'll be seeing some of the new ones that I had from long ago, actually. So today's reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. And I'm not going to read all of them. I'm going to let you finish doing that later. In those days when the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under the direction of Eli, there were very few messages from the Lord and visions from him were quite rare. One night, Eli, who was now almost blind, was sleeping in his own room. Samuel was sleeping in the sanctuary where the sacred covenant box was. Before dawn, while the lamp was still burning, the Lord called Samuel. He answered, yes, sir, and ran to Eli and said, you called me and here I am. But Eli answered, I didn't call you, go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed. The Lord called Samuel again. The boy did not know that it was the Lord because the Lord had never spoken to him before. So he got up, went to Eli and said, you called me, here I am. But Eli answered, my son, I did not call you, go back to bed. The Lord called Samuel a third time. He got up, went to Eli and said, you called me and here I am. Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to him, go back to bed. And if he calls you again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. And you know what? The Lord called on Samuel again. And Samuel did say this time, just like Eli told him, speak your servant is listening so the lord told many things to samuel and told him things that he was going to be doing so samuel did stay in bed until it was morning and then went to see eli and told eli what the lord said and after that samuel was listening an awful lot to see what it is that the lord was calling him to do and the lord spoke to him many times so our symbol today is a lamp that's got the oil and it's burning and it represents Samuel because Samuel was, the lamp was burning while he was sleeping and that the Lord did come and speak to him during the night. So enjoy the rest of the chapter and enjoy reading some more from the Old Testament as we proceed on. Thanks for listening. We light the third candle of Advent. We look to John, the one you sent, to point us to your light. The light will come into our world and enlighten everyone. God sent John the baptizer to prepare the people for the coming of Jesus Christ, the true light of the world. John called for people to repent their sins and to live faithfully. He baptized with a cleansing water and proclaimed the new life that Christ, the one who would follow him, would bring. This Advent, we ask for God's mercy and a joyful new beginning. Merciful God, we give thanks that you send messengers like John to call us to greater faith. We ask that these days we prepare for you in prayer and acts of compassion. Forgive us and lead us to your light. Amen. The scripture reading today is Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 4 and 8 to 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, 
to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Isn't it wonderful to receive good news, especially when one has waited so long for it to arrive, or you didn't know that it would come, especially when one was waiting for something specific? Hearing about the birth of a baby is such beautiful news, especially if it's happening in our own families or uh, loved ones close to us. Hearing about a new job, especially if one had been unemployed for a while, is extraordinary news. And especially now during this pandemic, we know that many people are suffering. And to hear that there's a new job coming up is an, an amazing piece of news. Having passed one's exams is probably one of the more exciting pieces of news one can hear, right? And I'm talking to those who are studying, who are, who are actually busy writing exams. And then there's the new puppy or pet that enters a home and changes everything, especially for the young ones. There are many things that happen that is good news to us. And in today's situation, any piece of good news is certainly welcome, right? This chapter of Isaiah is part of a body of poetic writings that speaks about the challenges of the people of Israel, their struggles and their hopes in Yahweh's interventions. The chapter begins with the proclamation of good news, which comes directly from God. It is divided, this chapter is divided into different sections, starting in verses one to seven, with an unidentified human actor, so to speak, who seems to be a person of authority and who is bringing good news about the restoration of Judah after their suffering in exile. Then in verses eight to nine, we see God entering the picture by declaring God's love for them and God's commitment to justice and then in verses 10 to 11, we, th this human person, this human representative, continues in great joy about Yahweh's clothing him with righteousness, as well as filling the community with righteousness and praise. So it is a chapter that is divided neatly into the first few verses where this person is speaking, then God enters, and then this person comes back again in the last couple of verses. We read that this individual who is speaking has been blessed with the spirit of God who came over him and anointed him to preach good news. And this good news involved the healing of the brokenhearted, we read. It involves the proclamation of freedom to the captives and release from darkness for the prisoner prisoners. And it's about comforting those who mourn and more. This poetic exclamation comes from a deep understanding of the suffering of the people of Judah. 
and to be clothed with the divine gifts to speak and do these things is incredible. This will be a powerful ministry to the marginalized and will restore them to their full cap uh, capabilities. This passage also speaks about proclaiming the year of the Lord, which refers back to Leviticus chapter 25, where it deals with the economic restoration of those who had lost their land and properties. It's a very interesting chapter to read. This passage is God's way of letting the people of Judah know that their emotional and physical and economic suffering will come to an end. God will see to it that their life of poverty and powerlessness and despair will be transformed by this good news of change that will be manifested in their lives and in their communities. So in verses 8 to 9, we then see God entering the scene. And there God uh, declares God's love for justice. The reason why all of this will happen, says God, is because I love justice and I hate robbery and inequity and iniquity. I hate to see my people suffer. I will change their circumstances from mourning to gladness, from ashes to beauty, from despair to praise. I want my people to be in a good place and I want them to be happy. And the nations who did this to them, to Judah, will witness these changes. Those who took Judah into exile, who destroyed the temple, they will witness these changes, says the Lord. Those who did this to them will see the double blessing that comes from me, says the Lord. My people will be restored and strengthened, and this is so beautiful, like oaks of righteousness. They will be strong like oak trees. And then once they are being strengthened, they will then rebuild their ruined cities. I am the Lord who loves justice and righteousness, says God. And then in the final verses, this individual comes back and is completely elated by the salvation he receives from Yahweh and the commitment of Yahweh to the people of Judah. Out of the ashes of despair, comes their justification and their complete healing and restoration. Righteousness will come to them because God is a God of righteousness. Now, while this text in Isaiah uh, 61 verses 1 to 4 does not refer to Christ the Messiah, but rather to the restoration of the devastation of the people of Judah, we see Jesus read this passage from the scroll of Isaiah at the temple in Nazareth. And we find that in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, where he reads, he took, he, he took this, this scroll of Isaiah in the temple and he started reading, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. And he continues reading. And after Jesus read that piece, he sat down and told those in the synagogue. Now remember, those who would be in the synagogue would be all the people curious to hear him. And then we also see the rabbis, all those uh, um, uh, religious leaders in the synagogue, obviously perhaps uh, upset about this man who's been walking around and and telling things about himself that they, are, that they are not in agreement with. So then he sat down and told those in the synagogue that this scripture that he just read is fulfilled in their hearing. Meaning that through his coming, this scripture has been fulfilled. He is that person. That statement created so much anger among the people in the synagogue they drove him out of town. 
They did that because his claim to be the one sent by God to heal the world is unacceptable. God, through Jesus Christ, is therefore, we now see, still committed to the restoration of the poor and the marginalized in the time of Jesus. And God is still committed to the restoration of the poor and marginalized today. That is who God is. From the time of Leviticus even, and even before, and then throughout the Old Testament, we see how the people of Israel were struggling in the wilderness and later on, and how God kept on calling <clears throat> prophets to, to lead them and to help them and to be instruments of God's messages, of God's covenant with the people of Israel. So that is who God is from the time of Leviticus throughout the Old Testament, a God of justice, a God of righteousness, who sees the plight of the poor, the victimized, the ones on the margins. So during this time of Advent, let us take a moment to reflect on the incredible love God has for humanity, for us. God's love is so immense, it challenges the forces of darkness then and now. God still sees every injustice in this world and will not rest where there is suffering. God emerges as this human being is speaking there in Isaiah 61. God emerges and talks about how the transformation will happen for the people of Judah. And that is an incredible piece, two, two verses for me to, to, to read and to see how God stands in a situation of suffering, how God is in the context of suffering. God is not removed from us as human beings. God still sees every injustice in the world and will not rest where there is suffering. The celebration of the birth of Christ is a celebration of joy, and it is also about the purpose of Jesus' coming, and that is to restore the pain and suffering of God's people. So when he picks up that scroll and he reads the same verses that we see in Isaiah, there's that same passage. He talks about himself coming with, with a purpose to heal, coming to restore, coming to bring a message of good news for the poor, for those who are suffering. Jesus is the one who comes to let us know that God is still with us. And so we as God's children can call out to this God of righteousness anytime to bring an end to an injustice in our lives and in this world. We can do that knowing that God hears us and wants to bring peace and healing and wants to bring us good news of change and transformation. I find this incredibly um, comforting in a day like this when we know that there is so much injustice around us, we have seen how 2020 revealed itself, not just as a, a year where we're suffering under this pandemic, but also as a year where many things have happened. Many painful situations have happened where many people are um, suffering and there's a lot of outrage. God is standing in this situation where there's injustices around us. And so Christ came into this world through the powerful work and love and commitment of God to the healing of humanity. God is about healing and Christ is the instrument of God's uh, purpose for healing of humanity. And so may God help each one of us to continue to believe that nothing is impossible with God in the face of pain and suffering, the suffering we may experience and the suffering we see around us. 
May God bless us as we are reflecting during this time of Advent and looking to Christmas. Amen. Let us now take a moment and uh, as always bring to God any concern, any celebration we have um, in the quiet of your homes. Uh, this is a moment where we can reach out to God and, and know that God is with us. So let us take a, uh, just a moment to, to do that. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you this morning for a new day, a day where we can come together from our homes to worship you. Thank you for your mercy on us and where we are in our homes, no matter what we go through, whether we have a good situation or whether we have maybe an illness in our home, whether we have financial struggles, whether we feel stressed because of this pandemic and how we have to do our work. Uh, everything has become just overwhelming. No matter what the issues, the struggles are in our homes, we want to thank you for being with us, for reaching out to us, for reaching down to us and reaching inside of our minds and our hearts and our souls. We are grateful for your love. We are grateful for showing us, that you're showing us through this uh, message, this passage in Isaiah that you see everything. You see the struggles of Judah, of Israel, but you also see the struggle of us today, whatever that is. And that you enter our spaces with a message that says, I love justice. I love righteousness. I am committed to change your situation. I'm committed to transform your life. It is wonderful to read that. It is wonderful to know that we worship a living God. That we are not, that we should not, and we do not have to be in despair that even though we may worry at times, that in, in our situations, we can call upon you and yet you will turn to us. And so we pray this morning for all of what we go through in our personal lives, our homes, our families, our workplaces, our neighborhoods. We ask that you reveal yourself like that in our lives. Let us see you, let us hear you, and let us be happy and joyful in the same way as this person reading uh, and, and proclaiming these messages in Isaiah, that we will have that same joy that we read about that that person had. And as we look to Christ, as he picked up the scroll, and talk to those in a synagogue and let them know that all of this, all of those good tidings are revealed in him. It's manifested in him and that he came for all of those things. And, I, and we saw in his life how he did so much to transform the lives of the early church, of those who came to listen to him that the same Christ is the Christ that we are celebrating his birth this month. And so we don't have to be in despair. We may sometimes be tired and exhausted and a little worried, but we don't have to because you are a living God standing in our circumstances. And so we are grateful for that. We pray for our church. We pray for um Everything that we go through, we ask that you will sustain us, that you will provide for us, that we will not be hopeless, that you will bring us together constantly. And I pray for those who feel that they are a little disconnected from our congregation, that you will bring them back, that you will bring them in, 
that you will touch their hearts, that you will give them a message. Let them know that this is their church. It's all our church. That whatever is happening, whatever feelings we have, that we can leave them with you because this church is about you. And it's about how you want to bless us as a congregation and each one of us. So help us to let go of the past. Things that have come between us and this church. We ask that through your Holy Spirit and power during this Advent that you will bring us together as a church. And through this that you will bless us, that you will give us a double blessing. A double blessing. We look for that, O oh God. We pray for this pandemic. We are grateful for these vaccines that are being, that are now um, coming to a, a moment where they are being released to these various states and in various places in the world. We pray that that this will be a good thing for us, that you will guide those who are working on it and that there will not be long-term negative effects on, on anyone. We really ask for your help and your mercy on us during this time. We also pray for our leaders all over the world and in this country. We ask that they will come together and see the humanity, the struggles that human beings are going through and that they will put their heads together, that they will put aside their uh, political differences or religious differences, whatever differences there are, that you will come and bring us together. Make us in this world, um, make us uh, uh, a population that will look to you, that will, will want to worship you and will want to overcome all that is not good in your eyes. And as you, as we learn that you are a God of justice, that you love justice, that you are against anything that hurts your people, we ask that you will make us instrument of justice, of reconciliation, of peace. So we ask now that you will really be a blessing to us. Give us that double blessing and we are grateful for the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Let us now pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now receive the blessing from God 
and feel at peace. May the grace of God and the love of Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Have a wonderful day, everyone.